you're out there, you're riding, you're having a good time and uh, taking in the, the outdoors. The fight isn't over. The fight is just beginning. What's going on guys? So today I'm doing a review on the 21 KTM 350 EXEF and there's a couple things I just wanted to go over, just the basics of the bike before I get into the details. First of all, this is a bike that if you want to take it on the highways constantly, I would recommend a bigger bike, something with at least 45 horsepower, whereas this one only has about 35. This is a great feeling bike in the dirt. It's a good option to connect trails with. Um, I would say my biggest gripe about it is the transmission. It has a six speed wide ratio. However, that last sixth gear is just not wide enough. So I really wish they would have expanded that out more so that you could create this gearing is actually geared up so it can go faster and it'll still barely do 65 at pretty high rpms I wish they fixed the gearing a little bit to where you could actually cruise at 65 with the gripe out of the way I think the rest of the bike just feels really really solid um, it is low on power for a 350 but that's to be expected with the EPA regulations today I'm riding the 2021 KTM EXEF 350. And I will say, after riding this bike, it feels really refined. The clutch feels great. There's no grabbiness to the clutch whatsoever. The brakes are really progressive. There's no grab to the brakes at all. This is a six speed wide ratio transmission and it uh, is fuel injected. It has Explore 48 forks. Everything seems to work really well on this bike and it really, um, is the most dirt bikey feeling dual sport I've ever ridden. I know that a lot of people were kind of anti um, KTM and Beta at first, as far as the dual sports go, but uh, after riding this bike, and after they really came out with these bikes and, and let them be in the market for a while, I think a lot of people just had to sit back and say, you know what, these are really reliable and high performance. These are absolutely dual sport bikes. The main issue that um, he has with this bike is it's a six speed wide ratio, but it, it feels too close ratio. He has higher gearing on this so that it can cruise easily on the road. Um, however, that does make it to where first gear is a little bit high for um, riding trails with, you know, the real tight stuff. He added a skid plate to this right off the bat. These bikes do not come with skid plates. Uh, my biggest gripe with this bike is actually the horsepower. He, he has no complaints with the horsepower, but I, I certainly do. Uh, it's, you can't really fault KTM though when it comes to that one. They have, they have so many emission standards to abide by that it is really hard to make any power. So this is really soft in the horsepower department. This is the most dirt capable bike I've ever ridden that, that is street legal. And it feels more refined than my Beta 500. So that's saying a lot. He switched out the tires because the stock tires do really suck. The Continentals, um, they're kind of more of a street oriented tire. They just don't hook up very well in the dirt at all. But this bike feels so lightweight and that's probably because I'm used to riding a 500 or a 450 four stroke now and um, the, the centrifugal weight of the engine really makes a huge difference. So this is a little bike as far as um, the engine size compared to what I'm used to riding anyways. The wind is really cooking out here. 
so I'm actually shocked that this drone is able to keep up at all. Uh, I was really worried about this. And see that bird over there? It's just floating in the air. That's how crazy the wind is right now. Just keeping me... <laughs> wow! Good job, Skydio. Yeah, it's a nice day out today. Getting to ride the KTM, do a little bit of testing on it. As far as gas mileage, he's getting anywhere from 65 to 70 miles per gallon, which is good to know. Uh, this is a 2.25 gallon tank. So that 65 to 70 miles per gallon will get you a lot of miles. This will actually go just as far as my Beta 500 will. And my Beta has an oversized gas tank. My Beta has a 3.1 gallon gas tank. Which, uh, when it comes to displacement, it's going to eat up more gas. It's one thing you have to take into consideration when you, when you are riding a big displacement bike. And it feels really soft and plush. It actually feels really nice. But he backed off the shock so that he could touch a little bit easier. kind of jab me in the ribs there and honestly I don't think you could have a better feeling clutch and brake on this yeah the bike just feels so refined um, and another thing I mean he's any parts he wants he can just go to Moto One KTM here locally pick anything up he needs um, that place usually has what you need in stock. In fact, I just got a linkage bearing kit, uh, which I need to go pick up. But um, yeah, it seems like every time I call that place, they just have it right in stock. So I rarely have to wait hardly at all. It's pretty awesome. And their customer service over there is great. I'm not sponsored by Moto One or anything. I know it seems like it because I always talk about them, but um, that's a great place to go. So here locally, that's a, another good reason to go with KTM is just because you have great dealer support. The dirt bike version of this bike makes 58 horsepower, I believe. This bike only makes like 35. I'm just going off of memory here. It could be something like 37, but I'm, 35 is ringing a bell. And it certainly feels like 35. So, um, if it were me buying a, a bike like this and I wanted a bunch of horsepower, I'd go with the 500, although the 500 is going to get less fuel economy, that's for sure. how this thing keeps with me the headlight I don't know of a dual sport bike or um, especially a lightweight dual sport bike like this one that has a good headlight stock and this bike is no exception my beta has a horrible headlight and so does this so does every other brand you can get aftermarket LED headlights that actually help you see at night but they will have to be purchased aftermarket. 
This bike comes with hand guards, but surprisingly enough, it didn't come with the skid plate, like I said earlier. But at least you do get hand guards out of the deal. I hope you enjoyed the review. I know there are certain things I probably left out, but if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments below, and I always try to answer those. This is not my bike, so this is a borrowed bike, but I have been around this bike for almost a year now. So I know it's little flaws and issues, and I feel like I'm qualified to talk about it. So, and now I've ridden it enough to really get a feel for it. Like I said, there's not too much to fault about this bike. The fine details really set this bike apart from its competitors. It's got so many nice, refined parts to it that it feels like everything's right where it should be. My one gripe about it is the transmission. Sixth gear should be way further out than it is. In stock form, if you don't change the gearing, you'll be struggling to go 55 in this thing. So, there you have it guys. 